Hi, welcome back to the Gapster channel. It's going to be an exciting one. We've got three different supercapacitors that we want to compare. Uh, the first one is actually a supercapacitor by AliExpress. Uh, this is a 3 volt one, it's supposed to be 3200 farads. Uh, it has a no name, uh, it just came like that, actually just white. There is no uh, brand on it or anything. Uh, there are some markings on the side, but that's about it. The other one is going to be uh, one from the Tech 8 group. Uh, I've seen me use this one quite often. And uh, this one uh, is actually from a reputable company. And uh, the third one is also known uh, as Eaton, is also another reputable company. And this one is also rated at 3 volts, 3000 farad. So, uh, so is the Tech 8 group, is also 3 volt, 3000 farad. Uh, now those two particular ones have very uh, same markings uh, on the sides exactly almost uh, so it's kind of interesting to see if actually are they actually any different. Uh, on the other hand the AliExpress one uh, has different markings and uh, it seems slightly heavier. We're going to weigh them actually and put them through different tests to see exactly uh, how do they perform relative to each other. So the first test is going to be we're going to actually weigh them. So the AliExpress is 510 grams. Decade group 500 grams and the Eaton one exactly 500 grams. So another similarities between those two. Now the AliExpress one has a slightly different uh, connection here on the screw so that could have been the extra 10 grams difference in weight but it seems like they're using uh, weight wise anyway they seem to be pretty identical. Let's go to the markings. So this one has no markings whatsoever anywhere. Now you can see some markings here. That's the only markings we see. At least we know which side is positive and that's important. Now when we compare the Eaton and the Tech 8 group one, you can see that they have the exact same markings. Uh, and if we look at the numbers on those two, all right, just darken the image so you can see the numbers. You can see that the numbering uh, system is pretty s similar to the other one. Of course, there are different numbers, but they're very, very close. I ordered four of the AliExpress ones and almost all four had a tiny little blemish. There's a tiny little bit of a depression here. This one has a, a smaller depression right here. Nothing terrible, but just they don't look as perfect as the other ones. And I wonder sometimes if maybe these did not pass the inspection of when they were producing a certain uh, number of supercapacitors and these failed inspection they ended up selling them on a cheaper uh, market. After charging them outside and realizing that they are safe to at least to charge inside. So then I uh, emptied it and proceeded to charge it again inside. I, I charge all three the same way, 3 volts and 3.2 amps, which is the maximum my power supply could deliver. So I do have it in a metal uh, case around it just to be on the safer side. And if I put my infrared scanner here, here you can see, I'm just going to dim the light a bit. You can see that it's displaying uh, 82 degrees Fahrenheit. So no heat whatsoever at all. It took roughly around 10 minutes to charge to 1 volt and uh, it's still uh, going. At 2.75 volts, this is when things started to slow down. Uh, so, so far it's been doing quite well, but after the 2.75 mark, we can start to see that no longer charging at 3.2 amps, it just dropped to 1.86 amps. As the voltage started to near uh, 3 volts, everything the charging slowed down quite dramatically. So now it's only uh, using about 0.65 of an amp versus before I was using the full uh, 3.2 amps. And uh, basically once it got to like 2.5 volts, uh, things start to slow down a little bit, which actually uh, what would be interesting to to gain from that is if you're trying to use, for example, uh, two of them for a five volt supply, make sure you get the three volt ones. Not only you get a safety margin, but you're also going to get faster charge rate because it's a lot faster to charge them 
to the five volt mark, uh, like in series, where I'm saying so that's two and a half each, versus trying to push it all the way to the limit of the three volts. So uh, basically, as the capacitors reach to their end, uh, close to the uh, maximum limit, it's kind of like batteries, they start to charge a lot slower. Now in this case I'm only using a regular power supply to charge the capacitor. In the real world you can probably use a actual charging where we use a, what we call a technique a constant current and constant voltage. So it's actually a charger and what it does it pushes the voltage higher in this case than 3 volt to force more amps into the capacitor. Even the, but remember the capacitor only uh, sees what's on his voltage. So as for example, the capacitor is at 2.8 volt, you're feeding it 3.2, but the capacitor only sees still 2.8 volts. So it's not gonna get damaged. But as you get closer to the edge of the three volt limit, it becomes a little bit tricky and becomes a little bit risky to do that technique. So you will still get slower charging, but again, not as bad as the way you see it here. And I took a thermal scan of this uh, capacitor that it's charging close to its limit. And as you can see here, it's basically a uh, room temperature looking about 80 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. So they do not get hot whatsoever. The last little bit is painfully slow. It's uh, we're looking now, it's been an hour and uh, 17 minutes. We are at 2.93. Uh, volts and uh, we're down to almost half an amp of charging. So we will get to the 3 volt, but it's just going to be a little bit slower. All right, we are at 2.975 and I think I'm going to stop right here because now it's becoming painfully slow. Uh, we are at 1 hour and 37 minutes. There's no sign of overheating or anything. Everything is working well. It's just charging slow. After charging the uh, capacitor to 2.95 volt, we're going to start discharging it, we're going to use a light bulb to do that. And uh, this way we're also going to control the voltage and we're going to time to see how long it takes to empty into the load. Because we're going to use a constant load, we're going to be able to compare whether all three supercapacitors are the same or if any of them have less capacity than the other. So here we go. You can see the light bulb dimming a little bit. It's a 12 volt uh, light bulb, just the one you use for cars basically, the old days. And uh, because it's only 3 volt, it's not glowing super bright, but it is actually uh, using power. And you can see uh, on the uh, display that the uh, voltage is actually dropping slowly down. It's been about uh, 14 minutes now and uh, we've used about a quarter of a volt down so far. Uh, our consumption dropped a little bit, so we're roughly around 242-43 milliamps, just because the voltage has dropped a little bit. So, uh, but uh, so far this uh, super capacitor has been uh, working just like it should. So, uh, so far so good. So it's been uh, basically uh, one hour now and we still uh, haven't dropped uh, half a volt. We're almost there, but not quite. There we go. We just uh, reached the uh, half a volt drop and we are at one hour, two minutes and a little change. So that's uh, pretty remarkable actually. These things uh, can go for a long way. Uh, now we can keep it running of course, but that was a good benchmark to measure. So when we compare other capacitors, we can uh, compare it to. Next, it was time to uh, test the TechAid group on uh, a supercapacitor and how it's going to discharge. We're trying to see if they're both, uh, which one holds the most power. Uh, so we're doing exact same setup. We're draining it with that same automotive uh, light bulb here. We are draining right now at this voltage uh, around uh, 280 milliamps. That's going to drop slowly as the voltage drops. Uh, we are right now at 2.88 volts. So we started exactly from 2.95, just like the other one. We're treating them all the same. So it's been about six minutes. So it has dropped a tiny bit since then. So we're going to keep going till we reach the exact same level as we measured with the uh, white uh, 
no name capacitor. So basically uh, it seems like the TechEd group is holding a quite a bit more uh, juice here. All right so we reached 2.45 uh, so this is basically where we want to be. So it's uh, 1 hour and 35 minutes. So we're at least a good 20 minutes over the uh, no-name uh, one and uh, well, uh, if not even more. All right, so now is the uh, Eaton uh, super cap turn. So uh, we started again at 2.95. So it's uh, definitely between the Eaton and the Tech 8 uh, on one side and the uh, no-name brand it was a little bit easier to charge it to 3 volts and, uh, and uh, with the no-name yes I was able to get there but it was very tricky and kind of dropped fairly quickly after. So same thing, same uh, story. We are using uh, that little same uh, light bulb that you see here. It's a little bit dim because it's a 12 volt and we're only using uh, 3 volts here. And uh, we are charging, we are depleting it around 280 milliamps. So roughly around the same. And here we are, we are getting close. Oh, here it is. Uh, so it's one hour and 31 uh, minutes. So it's fairly close to the Tech 8. I mean, within we get a bit of margin of error. I would say pretty much identical. If anything, maybe the Tech 8 had a tiny, tiny bit more, but definitely uh, not less. All right, so here you have it, the three big supercapacitors and uh, like we just tested them here. Uh, so which one would you buy? Could you put a comment in the description below on which one of these three would you buy? I'm not going to give you my opinion on which one I would buy. You probably see me uh, with different capacitors and which one I usually buy. But uh, I would have to say that each one of them has, of course, some advantages and disadvantages. This no-name brand from AliExpress, uh, it's definitely very, very inexpensive. And especially if you want to use it for something like a two, uh, two in series to do five volts, so you're definitely not charging it more than 2.7 volts, 2.8 volts, then this one will perform fairly well. It has a slightly less capacity 20% maybe less than, than those guys. Uh, but other than that, it does work fine. It has no, it didn't heat up or anything. Uh, it worked pretty well. And I think uh, uh, for the price, I think you can't, uh, you know, uh, you'd have to make your opinion and decide if that's really worth it for you. Now then we have those two guys. Uh, well, for these two, like I always said, they seem to be very close, if not identical, the way the markings and everything, and just the test as well are extremely close. Uh, they both charged well up to three volts very nicely, and uh, they both uh, di di discharge roughly close to the same, but uh, definitely we can't say that this one was less than, than the Eaton. And uh, other than that, they both uh, look very well made, very nicely done. Now this one is 30% cheaper than the Eaton one. And, uh, and so you just have to make your opinion between uh, those three uh, supercapacitors. One thing to note about all these supercapacitors is whenever you can get the 3 volt one and not the 2.7 volt one, unless you're doing a 3.3 volt supercapacitor, so you're having two in series to do 3.3 volt, doesn't matter, get the 2.7 volt because you're still not using much uh, capacity. If you are using 5 volt, for example, I would definitely go for the 3 volt one for two main reasons. One, for safety, you have a little bit of safety margin. Something went wrong with the balancer or with the charging. You're pretty close, you're not that far off, uh, so you get a little bit of safety margin and you'll be better off. The second and a very critical part is if you get the 2.7, you're always charging them to almost their cap maximum capacity. And as we noticed, as you get close to the maximum capacity, you cannot charge them fast anymore because they will only take 
very small amount of uh, charge power so you are forced to the speed get reduced quite a bit unless you overcharge the voltage so basically you're using uh, like a charger where you have a constant uh, amp and constant voltage but even with that you could only cheat so much we can only go so much above the 3 volt to, to make them take more amps so maximum you're going to be able to charge them at 3.1 volt maybe 3.2 very momentarily uh, but you know you're still now you start to push your limits so why go through all that when you can get the 3 volt ones for just a you know 20 bucks more and have basically uh, a lot more safety margin and charge them faster as well now this no-name brand from aliexpress was actually roughly 25 dollars so it's extremely cheap and the one from eaton is about 100 us dollars so uh, just do the math here and the tech 8 is roughly around 75 dollars this is like in us so uh, of course prices are just approximate just check the links and see uh, which one is it and uh, usually I get those from DigiKey uh, I get the Eaton one from Mauser and uh, this one you can get from AliExpress in the link description below I'm gonna put uh, the links to basically the capacitor and uh, the one from AliExpress and these guys here as well in case, in case. and I'm also going to put my uh, patreon link in case you like to subscribe to the channel uh, I'm also going to put my Patreon link in case you like to support the channel which will help me keep buying more of these guys and, and testing different things and for you guys. And the other thing I'm going to put in the corner here about uh, my Gapster TD1 DAC and uh, what uh, it's made for those of you who don't know much about it. And this corner here I'm going to put a link about my CRC Dual uh, Pro which is basically somewhat similar to supercapacitors in a way that it actually brings the ESR down. And that's something we can talk about it in here, that these have very low ESR. I'll be a speaker in the middle if you'd like to subscribe to the channel. And I hope to see you again next time. Take care.